ultimately form an opinion after reviewing all of these materials as to Michelle McNeil's cause of death. Yes. And what was your opinion? Uh, my opinion was that uh, Michelle died as a result of drowning. And uh, in addition to that, she had some uh, drugs on board which were not in toxic or lethal levels, but in my opinion, could have contributed to her death. That was medical expert Dr. Joshua Perper testifying on behalf of the prosecution in the Martin McNeil murder trial today. And one point of contention continues to be exactly how did Michelle McNeil die? Joining us this afternoon, we have criminal defense attorney Greg Scordis to help give us some analysis of the trial today. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Sure. I kind of want to start with uh, Dr. Perper there, what we just heard him say. Um, we know that the judge interrupted the trial, halted it, uh, had to take an hour break because this, this expert witness that the state has hired, they said he had been doing some outside research. Well, what does that all mean? Well, what happens is anytime you use an expert and anytime an expert's going to testify in trial, the defense, the other side, has a right to see his testimony, to have a preview of his testimony, and to prepare to cross-examine that. So in this case, he's done something since his last uh, The testimony. preliminary hearing right. testimony? Right. Okay. He did his own independent research. So this, the judge is saying, look, uh, defense, you, you didn't get a chance to prepare for this. We're going to call a timeout until next week so that you could go and, and prepare your cross-examination. Well, and so he called a timeout and about an hour elapsed. Came, the judge came back and said, that's fine. We'll allow the state to continue to have this expert witness, uh, this medical expert here. Right. The state, the, the defense wanted him to just leave. You can't testify at all. And the judge says, no, that's not fair. We're going to let him testify, but we're going to let you come back and cross-examine him next Does week. Does that kind of interruption affect the jury in any way when they're listening to this? or Probably. This case has been painstakingly slow anyway. I mean, we've had now four medical examiners testify, and so I think the jury's probably anxious to keep it moving on. I'm glad you brought that up because we know the state has shopped around for medical experts. Uh, they went through four, as you mentioned, before they found this guy, paying him $14,000 to conclude uh, that in this, according to him, of course, that Michelle's death uh, was due to drowning and drug toxicity. So what do you think the jury is going to make of that in terms of the prosecution paying an expert witness? I, I don't think the prosecution had any choice in this case, Nineveh, because their theory of the case is that she was drowned and that she was overdrugged. So they needed and someone to prove that, they right? They needed someone to say that. They needed someone with some MD after their name but to the say that. But the state does have a medical examiner, right? So why not just use that person? Because Todd Gray and prior to him, uh, Dr. Fricky couldn't say that. Based on their information, they weren't willing to take that. And the that. jury knows that. Absolutely. And Those so how does it affect the jury when they know that the state paid $14,000 for this expert witness, this doctor, to say what, you know, fell in line with what their theory is? Well, I think the defense is going to say if the doctors can't agree, how can how can eight jurors unanimously agree? And, and here's what uh, I wanted to also talk about. What is so bizarre is that this is a murder trial. Dr. Martin McNeil has been charged with homicide, yet her death held a murder by one person. Uh, that seems baffling. Well, but you, you have to keep in mind that medical examiners, doctors work in a vacuum. They look at the, at, at the body, the, the body of evidence the jury hears. They don't get to know. Well, uh, don't his, pol police look at the body of evidence? Yes, absolutely. And the jury's hearing the entire evidence. But the medical examiner just looks at, at what's presented to him or her. The jury can decide, well, okay, the medical examiner concluded this. The police also found this. And the fan we're entitled as jurors to conclude whatever they want, and the state wants them to conclude that it was a murder. And you know what, reasonable doubt, when you talk about reasonable doubt, that's all that it would take for the jury to turn in a not guilty verdict. So here we are, two weeks into the trial. What do you think? Well, the state's not finished. I mean, certainly at this point, it would not be, not be unusual to think this jury's got some doubt. The state still has four or five days. I don't know what they're going to do. They have some jailhouse informants or something like that, but they've still got their evidence to put on, and then we'll see how strong But right now is. at this stage of, of the trial, you think the jury probably has some doubt? Well, I think the jury still wants to hear the rest of the case. I think the jury is reserving a decision, and they're supposed to. They're told to. They're, sure. they're probably sitting back going, let's let's But hear your the, opinion, if story. you were a juror... Oh, I don't, I don't want to go there. He's not going to go there for me. All right. Okay, we're out of time. Greg Scordis, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate it. And of course, stay.